It's never been as attainable to make video games as it is today, with tools like Unity, Unreal Engine, and asset stores providing most of what studios need to create games. In addition to that, AI has already begun having an impact and will continue to do so going forward, not just with graphics and sound, but even with code. Yet new PC hardware sales are declining, more games being made than ever, but less new hardware being sold. Why is that? Let's look at the gaming trends from 2022 and see where the gaming industry is headed and how it will impact the PC hardware industry. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you could spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key from URCDKeys.com, a Windows 10 Pro key will cost you only $15 when you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and you can even get a free upgrade from Microsoft to Windows 11 if you wish. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased orders in the URCDK keys website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate and then on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, pasting the key you just purchased and click Next. That's it. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $60. URCD Keys is also having a spring sale with some cool affordable mechanical keyboards gaming mice and even chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. One of the various reasons why new PC hardware might not be selling as expected has to do with the rise of indie games over the last decade. One of the core disruptions in indies has been the time to market getting shorter and shorter. It used to be the case that you had to wait five years to get your favorite indie developer to release a new title, but those days are gone. Last year, 62% of indies and 58% of mid-sized studios made games in less than a year from start date to ship date, so indies are 1 to 9 people and mid-size are 10 to 50 people. This is thanks to Unity and Unreal Engine requiring less and less custom work being done and of course asset stores allowing for quick prototyping. Being this agile allows indies to focus on innovative mechanics and having a fast time to market strategy helps with keeping sustainable margins and low costs. From a hardware standpoint, it also means that the majority of games released within a year will run on low-end hardware. Virtually no indie developer is targeting a 3090 user, let alone a 4090. To achieve profitability, indies will want their games to run on 1060s. This creates a vicious cycle where gamers have no incentive to upgrade their hardware and devs have no incentive to up the quality of their graphics. One might think that shipping games in such a short time frame would require devs to be working late hours and weekends, but actually we're seeing the opposite, at least in the indie scene. Devs at indie, mid-size and low at mid-market, so that's up to 50 people, worked 1.2% fewer hours last year. 1.2% per developer amounts to about 5 years of total work hours within this dataset. Another trend on the rise is the renewed focus on mobile gaming, which is potentiated by more powerful mobile phones. And it's not just the indies that are focusing on mobile. Looking at the percentage of mobile-only projects, large studios saw the most growth last year, with a 44% increase compared to 2021. IP that is already well established in consoles and PC can now be easily ported to mobile in one form or another, and that's a huge monetization opportunity that large studios are moving towards. From a hardware standpoint, this means that mobile being the lowest common denominator forces devs to have scalable assets and systems, and these many times transition to the PC. Again, lowering the required hardware processing power to run games. Another sobering trend is how large studios in particular have been releasing more and more multi-platform titles. Large studios have increased the number of multi-platform games produced in 2022 by 16% compared to 2021 and 110% compared to 2019. This means games from large studios have to be optimized to run on console hardware, which by today's standard represents the low-end 
or mid-range PC hardware available. This is good news for AMD, at least for the time being, who makes the APUs that power the Xbox and PlayStation consoles, and bad news for Nvidia who have been producing ever more expensive GPUs. If games are being made to run on such a wide range of hardware configurations, with mobile and consoles as the baseline, there's little to be gained visually by running a 4090 instead of a 2080 Ti or a 6700 XT for instance. So why would gamers be interested in upgrading? Worst still are the latest options below the 4090, like the 4080, 4070 Ti or the 7900s from AMD. They represent terrible value and enable virtually no upgrades in visual fidelity beyond perhaps resolution, and upscalers are making the resolution argument moot. We can see that 88% of studios, with more than 50 people, are making cross-platform games. Indies have less resources for optimizing for more platforms, so they generally stick to one platform only, generally the PC thanks to its distribution platforms. If we look back to just five years ago, the industry was much more focused on targeting consoles, and the bad console port to the PC was very common. Things have improved dramatically, and last year 70% of studios that primarily build games for consoles also targeted the desktop PC. This is great news for PC enthusiasts, as there's less of a chance of missing out on console exclusives, and console ports tend to run better on PC nowadays. But it does come with the bittersweet taste that having the console as the baseline means ultra-high-end PC hardware goes mostly unused. Curiously, the platform that sees these multi-platform games being released first is the PC. Desktop PC is the top choice for 76% of multi-platform devs. I suspect the reason for this has to do with the fewer restrictions that the PC platform has when it comes to shipping games. Now, what does the future hold for consoles and AMD in particular? We can see that indies are focusing primarily on desktop and mobile. In fact, 77% of indies chose the desktop exclusively. In the cases where indies go multi-platform, 90% of those releases are mobile, desktop, and web. So if the majority of games coming out are indies, and in fact that's where we're seeing the most innovation, and these games are primarily being made for PC and mobile, that leaves consoles in a downward trend when it comes to a healthy selection of games. Add to that the advent of streaming, and the future of consoles doesn't look so bright. I suspect we will see a longer lifespan of console generations, and that will taper off AMD's profits over time, for their gaming and embedded divisions at least. Also, if there's no R&D being put towards more powerful APUs for consoles, that means it's less likely that new APU technology will trickle down to the PC. When it comes to AAA games, which usually aren't the games pushing the graphics bar, we're also seeing some interesting trends. One of the few AAA games I played extensively in the last couple of years was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mostly because of the setting. I'm a sucker for Nordic mythology. Ubisoft released the game in 2020, but was still releasing major content for it in 2022. There was a steady cadence of DLCs and events that extended the life of the game. And note that this is a single player game, not a software as a service type game like Fallout 76. Looking at the data, approximately 84% of studios with more than 50 people updated their games for more than six months last year. Conversely, only 55% of indies did so, due to having less resources, of course. So rather than seeing a new Assassin's Creed game being released every couple of years, every time pushing the graphical envelope, we're seeing AAA games sticking around for longer. That is another factor that is reducing the need for new, more powerful hardware. The rise of subscriptions and battle passes also seem to deter players from investing in newer games. So with all of that in mind, what are some of the trends that we can expect for this year and beyond? I think it will be interesting to see the impact of the global economic pressures in the gaming industry. On the one hand, in challenging times, studios tend to get more creative, both in terms of delivering innovative experiences and in finding ways to retain players, but these tend to be the smaller studios. The larger studios tend to avoid risks and bet on existing formulas that they know will sell. So I expect an even greater focus from indie devs on innovation and more conservative releases from large studios. So basically sequels, remastered versions of old games, and little to no new IP. It is true that the pandemic delayed a lot of AAA games, so starting this year, I think we will see a flurry of AAA games being released that have been stuck in development limbo since the pandemic, but after that flurry, 
I think things will trend towards conservative bets only. Another trend that I've already covered in past videos is the rise of AI, not only in the development process, but also in user-generated content. Assuming Starfield will see the same success as Skyrim, it will be interesting to see how the modding community will leverage AI to create new content for the game. This can be as simple as generating 8K assets for the game, but also something more complex, such as having new game world content with NPCs that have uniquely generated voices, and even the conversation options might be AI generated. And lastly, I think the most worrying trend for us PC enthusiasts is how profitable the mobile market is becoming for devs, including devs that traditionally have focused on desktop and consoles only. Every day, 10% of the world population is gaming on their mobile phones, and a good chunk of them have no other platform. I think we've only seen the tip of the iceberg in mobile, but large studios are waking up to it. Only five months after launch, Diablo Immortal had generated $300 million for Blizzard. That's absolutely insane. And Blizzard have certainly optimized the addiction aspect of their games. They are a disgusting company in my opinion, but there's no doubt they have set the standard for mobile monetization. And I can see more and more large studios wanting a piece of that pie. If these trends do take hold, I think the PC hardware business will go through some dire straits. Big hitters like Starfield are still months away, and that's assuming it doesn't get delayed again. And Nvidia in particular is relying on it to be a success in order to sell new GPUs. But single player games like Starfield are becoming a rarity and development is shifting to games as a service, mobile and indie, while AAA graphically demanding titles are becoming less common. In a normal market, this would mean that the mid-range GPU would be very well positioned. A 4070 at $400 would be serving most gamers' needs, but AMD and Nvidia have cornered themselves into having to delay mid-range GPUs or launching them ridiculously overpriced in order to empty inventory of last-gen GPUs, which performed the same as the new gen mid-range but cost significantly less. The biggest winner here will probably be Intel, assuming they stay around in graphics, seeing as their GPUs are now the only viable mid-range options, at least for those wanting to buy brand new. It will still get better deals in the used market, but not everyone is willing to go that route. I will be looking at some of these trends in more detail in upcoming videos, particularly at the state of high-end graphics and AI-driven graphics, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By supporting my channel on Patreon, you will gain access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a welcoming community of tech enthusiasts. If you can't contribute at this time, then give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.